April 29th, 1899, the birthday of one of the greatest jazz musicians of all time, Duke Ellington, born right here in D.C. And tonight, the Duke Ellington Orchestra kicks off weeks of performances and celebrations at the Kennedy Center to mark 125 years since his birth. News 4's Jumiel Labanji spoke to his grandson, Paul Ellington, in our studio this morning. Duke Ellington, if you are from this area or you've been through this area, you have heard the name before. And tonight, you've got a special opportunity to help celebrate the 125th anniversary of the birth of Duke Ellington himself. And here to talk more about what's going on tonight, we have his grandson with us, Paul Ellington in studio. So good to see you. Nice to meet you. How are yes, you doing? Yes, good, good. Um, oh, so goodness, I mean, uh, your grandfather's name synonymous with arts in Washington, D.C. Yes. And uh, you are, are part now of this orchestra that he founded years ago. Talk to us about how special it is for you to be a part of that. Well, I joined the orchestra in 1978 when I was born. Um, and then since then, you know, I, I grew up uh, in parts of uh, Copenhagen until uh, I was 15, came to New York to go to Manhattan School of Music. Um, and then I took over the orchestra when I was 17 years old um, and ran that until I was about 26. But during that time, my dad told me, this is your job, taught me about how music publishing works, taught me about the business in general and uh, how hard it would be to keep the orchestra uh, going, but to make sure that nobody forgot who my grandfather was. Yeah. So yeah. that's been my job, yes. still my job. Yes, and uh, what a rich legacy. And so talk to us about this uh, special performance tonight that's happening at the Kennedy oh, Center. Oh my goodness, we are working with a wonderful singer for Duke's 125th, Lisa Fisher. Mm -hmm. A uh, tremendous singer, uh, very lucky to have this event with her. Um, and uh, she's going to be performing some of uh, legendary songs that Frank Sinatra sang with uh, Duke and also Ella Fitzgerald. Um, and before that, we're going to take you guys through a program uh, from, you know, spanning the mid-20s uh, th through his, his death. Um, so we're very excited to bring this and, and, and show what the Revitalized Orchestra looks like. What is so special uh, about, um, you know, music and, the, and this orchestra in particular? Um, and why does it mean so much to you and your family? But why do you think it's important to keep on sharing uh, with uh, the nation's capital here? I mean, he is America's greatest composer of all time. And his, the breadth and depth, to quote John Hassey from uh, the Smithsonian, uh, is, is greater than almost every... Uh, creator of music in the history of the world. Uh, to me personally, I grew up knowing that this is my granddad, so obviously I'm proud and biased, but also getting to know the works themselves, um, it, it's also historically significant, a lot of it. Beyond that, when you hear it and you go to most concerts, you feel good, you feel wonderful, or you may cry, or it may evoke some memories if you grew up with this music in your family. Um, there's nothing quite like it. Obviously, he has a legacy here in D.C. We know the music, we know the high school, but what do you hope that legacy continues to be? Ooh, well, I hope no one forgets who he is because, you know, I've been running into people my age and a little bit younger, and, and you ask them who he is, and, uh, you know, in, on a good day, they may confuse him with somebody else like Miles Davis or Louis Armstrong. Mm. On a bad day, they look confused. Mm. Um, so I think for the rest of the time I'm on Earth, it's to make sure that, that he's not forgotten. Yeah. That's, I mean, he's that important. He should never be forgotten.